Hi, I'm Pavan Jaiswal, the director of BrainWiz. In my recent video, I have uh, given the basics of percentages, I have given direction sense. Now, for you people sitting at home, let me teach you one extra topic. The topic is profit and loss. Profit and loss is very easy topic. It's a general topic which we see in our daily life. When you go to a shop, you might see that the shopkeeper is purchasing at some other price and is selling at some other price. When he's selling at two different prices, in between whatever he'll get, it will be a sometimes profit and it will be sometimes loss. So let me introduce the basics here. Now, the basics is there are two kind of things. One is said to be cost price, one is said to be selling price. When the cost price is more and the selling price is less, we always have loss. But what happens sometimes, what we have here, when the, when the cost price is less and the selling price is more, we always have profit. So these are the two quantities we should remember that. Cost price and selling price are there and profit and loss are always dependent. Profit and loss are always depending on this cost price and selling price. And whenever we have to calculate the loss and whenever you have to calculate profit, those things will be calculated on cost price. So this is a way we have to remember that cost price and selling price are the two things which are there. And here loss and profit are always depending on these two quantities. Okay, now let me just try to go and teach you the first question. Now here on the screen you have seen the function here. Some items were bought at seven items for rupees four. So you have seven items for rupees four and sold them. He's selling them at the rate of five items for rupees four. So here let me just try to show you here. Cost price is seven items. Seven items for rupees four. And here you have the selling price is five items for rupees. Now, here we might be thinking that cost price is 4 and selling price is 4. We think that there is no profit, no loss. Sorry students, this is a matter. This 4 rupees is for 7 items and this 4 rupees is for 5 items. So we cannot judge profit or loss based on these things. So it will happen when we have to equate these two. When quantities are same, then we can decide the profit and loss. When quantities are not same, you cannot decide the profit or loss. So better, let's try to make these two equal. Then how to make these two equal? So I am multiplying this by 5 and I'm multiplying this by 7. When you see here, it will become 35 and it will become 35. Now 35 items, you already know that. 7 items you are sell purchasing at 4 rupees and definitely 35 items you need to multiply here 5 into 4 that is rupees 20. And here, let me teach you here, 5 items you are selling, 5 items you are selling for rupees 4. So 35 items you are selling for rupees, 7 is multiplied with this also. So we can say 7 for the 28 rupees. So here we can say I can judge the profit or loss over here because these two payments are for the equal quantities. So let's try to go across and just try to see how we can just try to get the profit percentage. Now let's try to see the cost price is 20 rupees and the selling price is 28 rupees. Now here we can see 20 rupees is an investment. Now we can see the 20 rupees is a cost price and selling price is 28 rupees and he has made a profit of 8 rupees. So we can say this is 8 per 20. So how to calculate the profit percentage? That is very simple. Selling price minus cost price divided by cost price into 100. So we can say that 28 minus 20 divided by 20 into 100. So it makes 8 divided by 20 into 100 which makes 1 zero, 5 zero, it is 40. We can say 40% profit. Students, what do we do that? Now here, this is not required. Students, this is not required. Students, this everything is not required. So this 40% answer we will get within a fraction of seconds. So this is what we are supposed to do now. Let me just try to remove all that which we doesn't require. So we are doing in a very simple method, in a very simple method. Now, let's try to see the simple method. Whenever they say seven items for four rupees and five items for four rupees, what you need to do? What you need to do, the shortest way is what? 5 is multiplied with this 4 which makes 20. Same fashion to do multiply 4 into 7 that is 28. Here we can clearly understand that 
20 rupees is an investment and he has got 28 rupees back when you see students here 8 rupees extra so we have to understand that this 8 rupees profit he has got on 20 rupees this 8 rupees profit he has got on 20 rupees so we can say that 4 twos are and 4 fives are so answer is 2 by 5 as I have told you in your previous classes of percentages we have learned 1 by 5 is 20 percent 1 by 5 is 20 percent 2 by 5 will definitely be double of 1 fifth so this will be multiplied by 2 which makes a sense that is 40 percent so in this way in this way we have got the answer 40 percent so what do I tell all the time that you should not go with the traditional method where you have a long process this shortcut method is saving a lot of time of yours so like this we have a couple of questions let's try to go for the second question in which it will be very easy for you to understand so one question is not sufficient let me take you to the second question now look at this question he told you some items were bought for six items for rupees five and sold them at the rate of five items for rupees six so you can understand that here quantities are not same so he's asking you what is the overall gain percentage for doing this let me just try to go and tell you Look, the cost price is told six items, six items for rupees five, and the selling price is five items for rupees six. So, students, as I told you, the shortcut, the shortcut is nothing else. Now, the easiest method, as I've already told you, five is multiplied with this five. 5 fives are that is 25 and same fashion you have to multiply these items with the selling price 6 into 6 that makes 36 students it's a very clear cut that the cost price is 25 rupees and the selling price have become 36 rupees now let's try to move forward here the cost price is 25 rupees 25 rupees you have invested and the selling price is 36 rupees when you just try to see you can clearly say that it's a profit business in this profit business you have to see the gap the gap between these two is 11 rupees so we can say 11 rupees is a profit on the investment of 25 rupees so can you call 11 percent no you can't call 11 percent 11 when divided by 100 we can clearly say it's 11 percent but when we just try to see here this is not 11 percent this is 11 per 25 so we have to get a fraction here now we have to get a fraction that this is 11 on every 25 so 11 on every 25 rupees so when you multiply with 100 it will be definitely 4 so answer I think it's a very clear that 44 percent so option a is a perfect answer so this is the style you are supposed to do this kind of questions have come already in SEC examination and Infosys all have have also given this kind of question so let's try to see a one more question for your quick understanding so when we see here a fruit seller purchased some oranges at the rate of 7 for rupees 10 and sold them at the rate of 10 for rupees 13 so is it a profit or is it a loss we have no idea let's try to go across once again I think you understand that cost price of seven items is rupees 10 and here the selling price of 10 items is rupees 13 so we are supposed to find out is it a profit or loss so dear students we have no idea whether it's a profit or loss let me just cross cross multiply now 10 is multiplied with this thing that is 100 rupees and 7 is multiplied with 13 that is 91 rupees students now you can clearly tell that is it a profit or loss definitely it's a loss his investment his investment is 100 and his profit i mean his selling price is 91 so definitely a clear cut loss so the loss is 9 rupees so you can understand that the loss is clear cut sorry to say now the clause is you know the gap is 9 rupees this is 9 upon 100 as I already told you the basics the profits and loss are always calculated on the base the base is always cost price so 9 per cent we can say 9 per cent so we can understand that this is 9 percent 
loss. So when we see the options here, option B is a perfect answer. So likewise, we have got many questions. So once you have a practice of these questions, definitely you can get a lot of stuff. Let's try to see one more question which was given in InfiQ 2020 this year in the month of January. So we think that Infosys gives some tough questions, but it's not like that. This kind of easiest question it has given. So what the Infosys has given, let's try to have a look. Infosys have given that a man purchases some number of pencils. We don't have any idea how many pencils, but the price he purchased it, 11 pencils he have purchased for rupees 10. And he also sold them at the rate of 10 pencils for rupees 11. So we have no idea whether it's a profit or it's a loss. So let's try to have a look everybody once again. Cost price of 11 pencils is rupees 10. And the selling price of 10 pencils is rupees 11. So students, we have to multiply here items. So students, we have to multiply these items. 11 have to be multiplied with this 11. So hope you know 11, 11 is a 121. Same fashion, we have got 10 pencils with this 10 rupees. So 10, 10 is 100. So students, now you can decide the profit and loss here. Why? Why you were not able to decide the profit and loss here, 10 rupees and 11 rupees? Because quantities were not same. When quantities are not same, you cannot decide. So how to just move forward? So in order to make quantities same, no need to take LCM. LCM will be a little bit tedious for you. The immediate way is what? Cross multiplication and making the balance of these things. Now, let's try to see here. Now, let's try to see here. The cost price is 100 and the selling price is 121. Students, very clear. The base is already 100. Extra 21 rupees he got it. 21 upon 100. So, we can call it 21 per cent. So it's a 21% profit or loss. You all know that it's a profit. Likewise, likewise, we can just try to get the answer. So the answer is not Agra. Now the answer is A. Answer is 21% profit. I hope you are enjoying the session. Okay. So one question I would like to give you that was given in the government examination. Let's try to see this question. Here he has not given any kind of number. Here he, he has given all the variables. Look at the variables what he has given. He told that X articles for rupees Y. X articles is rupees Y. And he told you at the same rate, Y articles are rupees X. Y articles is rupees X. He's asking you that the X is greater than Y. Remember, he told you the number of quantities he purchased and the number of quantities he sold are different. X is more than Y. So is it a profit and loss? Now tell me, we are not supposed to do balancing of all these things. So as I told you the shortcut method, that method will be 100% helpful for you. Listen now, here, y is multiplied with this y, that becomes y square. And x is multiplied with this x, that becomes x square. So students, we all know that. The cost price and selling price are known to you. So how will you calculate the profit percentage here? So in this way, I can clearly say that option C is a perfect answer. And students, let me tell you here, X is greater than Y, he already told you. If X is less than Y, it's always a loss. You can take, try to note this point that in this thing, when X is, when X is more than Y, he told you, when he told you X is more than Y, it's always a profit and when x is less than y, it's always a loss. So clearly he told in the question that x is greater than y. When x is greater than y, it's always a profit. So option C is the best answer. So 
If you know this kind of shortcut trick of cross multiplication, you have got the answer instantly. But if you have followed the LCM method, that is not the preferable. So it's a very time taking. So I believe that you are understanding these kind of things. I'll catch you with more questions on this kind of thing. Okay, for more questions, you can subscribe our YouTube channel and we'll be making a new video on the basis of numbers and shortcuts and uh, also data sufficiency. So for more topics, you have to subscribe the channel and then try to keep sharing these things to your friends and juniors who are eagerly waiting for aptitude. Hope you have liked the session. Hope you have understood these shortcuts. Thank you very much. Subscribe BrainWiz and press the bell icon for more updates.